Just move that forward just a little bit. Hi guys, my name is Charles. I'm one of the surgeons at South Coast. And today we are doing um, an elbow arthroscopy for fragmented medial coronoid process in about a nine-year-old, eight-year-old um, regular Kelpie um, who has a history of really severe left forelimb lameness. We're doing it bilaterally, but I'm only going to live stream one of them. Um, and so we did a CT scan and found large fragments on both sides. So the first thing that we're going to do is put in a needle through the triceps tendon or just medial to the triceps tendon. There's quite a bit of degenerative joint disease in this elbow, and so it can be tricky to get into the spot that you're looking for. So now we're just going to aspirate, see if we're getting joint fluid out here. So we've gotten joint fluid there. You can't see that. I'll try to bring this back into the field, and you can see the really stringy joint fluid there. So that tells us we're in the right spot. Now the next thing, oh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. So first thing we're going to do is attach a syringe, and we're going to inflate that joint. And then I can palpate the epicondyle right here. So I'm going to be going in at about 5 o'clock relative to the epicondyle right here. So James, can you come in here and just watch your head on the light handle and just inflate that joint for me? You can inflate it quite quickly. So we'll just feel and just keep holding pressure there. And I'm going to go in right about there. And so you can see that we're in the joint. And we'll remove that. And I like to maybe extend that a little bit and really abduct it. So I like to try to get in to the joint space with my needle. And then I'm going to use a blade to cut alongside the needle and to try to get into the joint with that. And then we're going to take our trocar and sheath, drop that into the joint like that, and I can pull my needle out and then advance that into the joint. And then I'm just going to flush through my needle and just make sure that we're getting fluid coming out of the out of the um, sheath. Now I might try to zoom out a little bit so you can get a better image of what's going on there. All right, so now I put my scope in. Can you turn anti-clockwise very gently and then just pull it straight out? That's it. I'm putting a telescope on, attaching our light guide, turning on the fluid or the flush, and that's coming out through the egress needle nicely. And then I can tell that we're in the joint here. So I'm looking cranially. So that's the coronoid right there. That's the semilunar notch. That's all synovial proliferation. Now I'm looking back along the semilunar notch there. That's my egress needle. This scope may be broken. Having a look around in here. 
So that's the humeral condyle there. And that's the big fragment sitting right there. So that's the coronoid right there. I'm sorry that it's so blurry. I'm concerned that maybe our scope is, the telescope is broken. I'm glad you went first. Yeah. It's really frustrating when you get these scopes out and they're broken because they're very expensive. So that's all fragment right there. I'll just come in with my needle alongside. And these scopes are bloody expensive. Trying to find my needle inside the joint. You can see things moving around. Can we get a towel underneath here, please? This is a 30 degree scope, uh, 2.3 mil. The angle of the taper on the, the offset, offset, yes. Um, okay. So I'm just going to find my needle in the joint here. I actually have to get a new scope because I cannot see very clearly what's going on here. Can I get a new scope, please? Uh, it's a 2.3. I don't think we'll have a 2.3, so I might have to get like a 2.7. Just really squeeze that white valve down right there. Yeah, great, thanks. See if that's clear. So that's all clear. So it means it has to be the scope. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, hold on. So that's one really nice thing about being in a big referral center that we have doubles of everything. Because if you were in a place that only had one scope of each size, you'd really be in a heap of trouble. Can you just, yeah, that one may just come straight out. Connect the light guide here. On, that one's off, connect our camera. So this is another 2.3 and that is heaps better. Look how much clearer that is. So that's synovial pro proliferation on the other side. That's a semilunar notch coming up, coming around caudally. So that's the Ancaneus there, ancaneal process. And there's not full thickness cartilage erosion in this joint, which is good. I was afraid that there was going to be. 
All right, so now I'm going to get my other needle. And try to find that. Can you uh, internally rotate, externally rotate the arm? Okay, that's great, thanks. So that looks like it's actually radial head right there. Yes. So I'm just trying to find my needle on the inside of the joint. Uh, internally rotate, externally rotate a little bit. Yeah, so that's radius there, and that's the, my fragment out there. So I just need to identify my needle within the joint. Uh, elbow dysplasia, I would imagine. Okay, so I can feel my needle within the joint. I just can't find the tip of the needle. Where are you? And I'm looking in the direction of the needle there. It should just be right in front of us. So that's all fragment right there. I feel like there it is right there. So there's my needle. So now I'm just going to try to elevate the fragment and just try to release it from the, from the surrounding soft tissue. That's just a great fragment sitting there, just popped out in the middle of, you know, middle of space. So I'm just using the needle to try to push against it, to try to elevate it and release the soft tissue attachments. It's uncommon for you to get in there and see a fragment that's just so freely floating in space. There we go, so I've released that. Now I need to get a blade. Can you grab that arthroscopy kit there? Yep, bring that out and let's see what we got instrument-wise as far as graspers are concerned, these guys. That's what I need. If you just hand that to me when I need it. So I'm gonna cut along. You can see the blade sitting right there. And then I'll reach in alongside. So there's my grasper. And I've got the fragment there. I'll just gently try to pull that out. There we go. So that's sitting right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. That is probably the easiest arthroscopy I've ever done. <laughs> I think it's so, um, so that's again radial head, give the radius a turn so you can see how that's rotating there. And then that's humeral condyle there, that's the medial condyle, lateral condyle coming up to the anconeus right there. There's my egress needle. And I'm just going to grab a curette and just scrape a little bit of this tissue out. Can you grab that needle for me please? I can find, there it is. So that's my curette. So I'm just now cleaning up that surface a little bit. Ideally, we should get it back to bleeding bone, but that is such a chronic 
uh, so we might not be able to get that bleeding. Can we get some mepivacaine, please, and some 3 nylon? So I'm just going to clean up that edge right there. So that's all coronoid process that I'm cleaning up. And that should be pretty much it. So uh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so that you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. And I'm going to end the live stream now. And we'll call it a day. Hopefully I'll have something else to stream later on. So um, I don't need a shaver. I'm just looking um, at the questions here. Um, so this is a 30 degree scope, 2.3 millimeter. The dog is about 10 years old. The bilateral elbow arthroscopy with CT scan is about $5,500, 5,500 Australian dollars, which is about 4,000 US. Uh, there's no real limit on the size of dogs that can be scoped. It just is a limited by the size of the equipment you have. We have scopes going all the way down to 1.9 millimeter rigid scopes, and we have some Flexi scopes that are down to about a half. I think they're about a about a millimeter. I think it is for the needle scopes, um, all the way up to four millimeter for really big dogs. Um, so that's the yeah, that's the that's the limiting factor. So I'll go ahead and end the live stream now, and um, hopefully I'll be able to stream something later on. Thanks again. And we'll talk to you soon. That was a great